One of the things I have been most requested to do on this show is Evo cards. Evo cards are short for evolution cards that you place on top of your Bakugan character cards to make them more powerful. It's an amazing feature of the game that I really love because it makes it seem like I have control over when and how I should evolve my Bakugan. Whether it's evolving at the end of the turn so that you can serve energy, evolving in the middle of battle to piss off your opponent, or evolving before battle just to set your opponent into missing, or let's Titan Dragonoid can do that to you. There's a certain level of randomness when it comes to evo cards because since they're a part of your deck, it adds layers of thought to the deck building process. An evo card can go into the drop zone due to damage or discard it by dreaded darkest abilities or destroyed and or negated so it doesn't seem like there's an imbalance to them. So how many evo cards do you really want in your deck that you will be able to play at least one of them but still have room for other cards that you need? Unless you're Maximus Gargonite Ultra, where you can just play it from the drop zone. Seriously, you just can't stay dead, can you? Now, since there are a lot of Evos that I go over, like Chaos Vice, Hyper Viserox, Titan Cindius, uh, Maximus Lupithion, and all that stuff, uh, I don't think you guys want me to go over every single one of them one by one, because, uh, you know, that would be pretty boring. So, for the interest of time, I'll just give you the top 10. Though yes, there are unfortunately some Bakugan that got left in the dust and didn't get an Evo card, and there are Evo cards that unfortunately didn't get an actual Bakugan. Rip in peace, Ventus Scorpros Ultra, and hallelujah, Ventus Pyravian Ultra. Skyris is back, baby! Woo! But overall, there are so many Evos to choose from with so many Bakugan, and it's overall an exciting time. I asked on Twitter as well what people thought their top 10 Evos were, and a lot of you make very good suggestions, so I'm gonna break down my personal top 10 Bakugan Evos at the Bakugan Pro Game. But first... Hey everyone, it's so great to announce that we have officially reached 1,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Thank you guys so much for everything that you've given to me. Your support means the world. And for those of you that are not subscribed to this channel, which is a majority of you watching this video, please do consider subscribing because your support would help in so many ways. Uh, I try very hard to bring you consistent content, and so please do subscribe if you enjoy my content. Oh. God, I, I have to do the I have to do the dance, don't I? Number 10, Chaos Titan Nilius. Chaos Nilius' base form has 300 B power and 5 damage. That's not a lot and definitely is substantially weak compared to powerhouses with bases of 800, now 1000. At best, Nilius would get to 950 B power on Blue Shield. His Titan form is only a 4 cost, which can be brought out very easily if you have it in your hand by turn 4. Combined with all the abilities and best core bonuses, Chaos Titan Nilius can reach 1900 B power and 15 damage before ability cards and such. This would make Nilius a contender tender to high power Bakugan like Dragonoid Ultra, Darkest Ramparian, and even Ultima Dragonoid, also even Mike Mac players. Now granted, Nilius does have a weakness where any card that wipes cores from the field or steals cores will immediately shut it down, but realistically outside of rapid fire decks, how often will you see that? Chaos Titan Nilius to this day is actually still being sought after for decks and collections, and with it being an awesome rare from the very first card set, good luck finding him. If you run a team that's predominantly blue shield and your Chaos player, this guy can definitely make a claim for being your trump card. Number 9, Ventus Maximus Dragonoid. This guy is an absolute beast because 1207 Bakugan is a very powerful early play Bakugan. I say early play because it's possible to get this guy out on turn 2. With the introduction of Trifecta and Armored Elite, Maximus Dragonoid can be played on turn 2 if you use low cost core grabbing cards like Mega Punch. Now granted this is still a gamble because you would have to win your first brawl, and that first brawl needs to be keeping the Baku core, but even though you might not get Maximus Dragonoid early play ability off, at 5 cost Maximus Dragonoid can still be played relatively early game normally because in a Ventus deck, a faction known for its energy ramping, that's not going to be much of an issue to do. A 1207 Bakugan is great stats, it's still an extremely rare card to find. If you add this guy to your Ventus team, you can make your deck pretty viable. Number 8, Orlis Titan Dragonoid Ultra. Need I actually have to talk about this guy? Orlis Titan Dragonoid was absolutely notorious back in the Resurgence era. He can be put in Chaos Titan Nilius and, well, any other dual faction decks if I'm completely honest. Orlis Titan Drago dominated the meta for a while because of its ability. This card counts as all factions. Back then, and even people to this day, used to stop non-faction cards because they were the only flip cards that were worth a damn. If Orlis Titan Drago leads a team attack, you are going to be smacked for high amounts of damage and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Unless you actually ran those cheap stop this faction cards or you play Ventus and pray Drago doesn't have Shadow Strike. 
at 4 cost, he takes no effort to get out, and can even be brought out turn 1 if you cheese him out with Super Fuel or Air Zero. The reason why he's number 8 on my list is because he's actually not that big of a deal nowadays because of so many new Bakugan that's able to match him. The Drago Ultra toys from Battle Planet also have this defect where they often fling cores away when they open. Three. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> classic! Oh. Classic! Classic bullcrap! So, it was more than likely you're dealing with just its base power. He would have been higher on my list if he got the hyper toy that fixed the defect, but for something this strong, it is what it is. Moving on. Number 7, Dragonoid Maximus. Holy crap, I just realized there's three Dragonoids in a row on this list. Dragonoid Maximus is an insane evil monster with 2500 B power and 10 damage that can only be evolved from Titan Dragonoid Bakugan. Both can be found in the Dragonoid Maximus toy that's most likely you'll find easily at discount since it was rolled out last year. Now, here's where things get screwy. Dragonoid Maximus has an instant win condition ability that is the first of its kind. If you have Dan Kuzo, Leah Venegas, and Winton Styles on the field, you win the game. There's unknowingly been a lot of support for this card that's been released though. Leah from Age of Orlis can actually get the required hero cards out fast, and cards like Divine Intervention, Air Zero, Pyrosana, Dan and Winton even, can cheese out Maximus. Maximus may look like something that's unplayable, but when it was released, it actually was part of the meta along with Orlis Titan Drago and Chaos Titan Nilius. Dragonite Maximus as well doesn't need to be in an Awesome Ones deck to be viable because his stats can put him in any deck anyone wants. Dragonite Maximus is definitely an evil card to be feared a little. Number 6, Chaos Titan Pandox Ultra. Chaos Pandox Ultra is already a very decent Bakugan itself. At 702 with the possibility of 1100 at best, that's not too bad. But his Evo is actually a really strong one. Titan Pandox Ultra is a 4 cost 803. Doesn't seem that intimidating, but he treats all Bakugans attached to other Bakugan as though they were attached to him. This ability is very huge in a Chaos deck because of how many cores that they usually steal from the field. Pandox could potentially be power creeped or damage creeped, depending on your build. The only weakness he would have is if your opponent core wipes, as usual. All Pandox would have to do is to be the last Bakugan to brawl before the team attack, and if you were running a damage core deck, it would be an insane chaos team attack. For a 4 cost evo, this is actually an amazing card. Some people still search for this card to this day. Number 5, Pyrus Hyper Serpentis. This card is one of the most annoying cards ever. We're not even going to talk about his stats here, it's the ability that is the most important part. When this opens, if it is holding a red fist, make a Pyrus burn for 5. The most important fine print on this card is when this opens. So re-rolling this Bakugan would inflict significant burn on your opponent if you land on a red fist. Just play Bakugan that are double red fist and you'll be fine. Having tons of re-roll cards like Super Fuel, Quick Fire will help you and you might as well throw Emily and Jenkins in there as well for even more burning. It is insane. He says that he has a place to have them. Woo! Number 4, Chaos Maximus Pegatrix Ultra. Chaos Max Pony is an absurd card because of her ability. Whenever this opens, attach all Baku cores on opposing Bakugan to this. This effectively shuts down Bakugan with core bonus abilities and also even cripples team attacks potentially. Maximus Pegatrix Ultra already has stats, 1100 B power and 7 damage, which is already very powerful and at a 6 cost it won't be too difficult to get out. Now, the counterplay to this would be to just purposefully grab negative cores, but what's really the point? You're gonna lose brawls. Try to play this card when Pegatrix is the last Bakugan to brawl before team attack, and play this card after you both open to get the most of the ability. It is a trifecta enabler, a domination enabler, and it's practically pillaging. And as previously stated with Hyper Serpentis, it's when this opens. So if your opponent plays a card that either grabs cores or plays a reroll to try and salvage the fight, if you feel like pissing your opponent off, play a reroll after they reroll so you can steal their cores AGAIN! Granted, you'll lose the other cores, but eh, it's funny, right? Number 3, Diamond Hydrus from Armored Alliance. I don't think it's any secret that competitively, Hydrus from Armored Alliance is one of the best Bakugan to use. On Helix Core, he gets plus 500 plus 5, making him 909, and after bonuses like, let's say, plus 600 minus 3, in the end, Hydrus is already going 1500 B power and 6 damage, which is pretty insane for a core Bakugan. That's why I've previously said about how I think Orlis Titan Drago doesn't seem like a big deal to deal with anymore because of newer Bakugan getting stats like this. 
Well, what if we take it one step further and give him more stat boost with his Diamond Evo? A 6 cost plus 1000 plus 10 on Helix, at best with plus 300 plus 3 or plus 600 minus 3, that's 2400, 19, or 2713. That's nuts! That's already outclasses Dragnoid Maximus and practically every other Evo in the game. In fact, you don't even need this Evo in your deck because Hydrus is beefed up already. Talk about a huge character development for Shun. Number 2, Orlis Titan Hydronoid Ultra. Orlis Hydronoid Ultra is already a major beast by itself because he gets plus 1000 on Red Fist. Grabbing a plus 250 plus 3 would make him a 1455, which could match Hydrus. But like Hydrus, let's take it one step further and make his Evo super power creep. At 4 cost, Orlis Titan Hydronoid Ultra gets plus 2000 on Red Fist, which could put him on a good day 2450 B power and 11 damage. But this is something important that I must interject with. Orlis Titan Hydronoid requires you to be skilled enough to land on a specific core to get the bonus. Same with Hydrus. They are only beefy if you are skilled enough to land on the right cores because without them, they have embarrassing stats. If you don't have the skill to land your rolls on the right cores or your opponent plays Max Pony or even Inferno Wings, then you're going to struggle with these or you might as well run Chaos or something else. My thesis is that these are more for the most skilled wrists, and if you feel confident enough, go ahead. They're still some of the most powerful evos to use in the game, still being sought after to this day. Before we get to the number one evo, here here are some honorable mentions. Number 1, Maximus Nilius. Maximus Nilius is one of, if not the best Evo in the game simply because of its early playability. Yes, it costs 8, but it's also a Rapid Fire card. Rapid Fire is a skill that we should be thanking God for. If you play a card that has Rapid Fire, the second one you play is for free. So let's say your first turn you roll Nilius out, you play a low cost Rapid Fire card like Darkest Ash, and then you play Maximus Nilius. Not only do you get 1400 B power, Beat Stick, but you also inflict 10 damage, and depending on the core you land on, you even beat. Hydra's first turn. The side effect is when Maximus Nilius is played for free either by Rapid Fire or Top Deck, or ability, it has to go back to your hand at the end of the turn. Sounds bad, right? But is it really? Bouncing the card back to your hand protects it from cards like Wayne, allows you to potentially use it for energy, or allow you to guarantee to do the combo again. It's like the developers thought, that was an awesome play. Let them do it again. Not only that, but Maximus Nilius won't stay dead either because of Maximus Dragonite Ultra here. If Maximus Nilius goes to your drop zone, you can revive it after winning a battle with Maximus Drago Ultra, and at the end of the turn, put it back in your hand. Guess you can call these two the Maximus Rapid Fire Brothers or something. Maximus Nilius is extremely fun, and it's no wonder people still look for him, and why his inclusion in the Darkest Faction Bundle was changed. So, that was my top 10 best EVO cards in this game. Do you agree or disagree with me? Let me know in the comments down below and let me know what your list of top 10 EVOs are in this game. And support Baku Talk by pressing the thumbs up and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren. Oh, wait. Okay, grab the camera. I'm gonna do the dance. You happy now? Is that good enough?